we're all aware of the importance of the natural environment and that each of us has a responsibility to protect it. The widespread use of pesticides by farmers, industry, the pest control industry, and the general public provides many possible sources for pesticides to enter into the environment. In the 1950s and 60s, environmental contamination from the use of pesticides was unexpected. It was thought that pesticides in the natural environment would either break down or be in such small quantities that there would be no risks to the environment. Ironically, the chemicals designed to increase food production and improve our standard of living were harming our environment. Most modern pesticides degrade readily when exposed to sunlight or microorganisms in the soil. However, misuse or misapplication can allow pesticides to drift to non-target sites or to move in surface runoff or leach into groundwater. Wells and watercourses have been contaminated. Non-target plants and animals have been affected. Trace levels of persistent pesticides have been detected north of the Arctic Circle and south of the Antarctic Circle as a result of air currents moving and depositing soil particles. Most of these persistent pesticides, such as DDT, have been banned from use in Canada since the mid-1970s. Because farmers own a large portion of Ontario's private lands, they have a unique responsibility to protect the environment on and around the farm and around their community. Keep in mind that farmers and their families are living in the same area where they apply pesticides. And it is in their own best interest to take this responsibility seriously. Neglecting to do so means risking the health of your family and your community. So what is the environmental risk of using pesticides? Each time you apply a pesticide on your farm, a number of things may happen to that pesticide. The pesticide may be taken up by plants, evaporated into the atmosphere, carried off as drift, or ingested by insects, worms, and microorganisms. The pesticide may adhere to soil particles or be dissolved in irrigation or rainwater. There is always some risk to the environment. The degree of risk depends upon four factors. How long the pesticide remains active in the environment, persistence, how easily the pesticide can move from where it is applied, mobility, how toxic the pesticide is to organisms other than the pest, non-target toxicity, and how much of that pesticide is used in the environment, volume of use. Environmental risk can be summarized in this equation. Environmental risk equals persistence times mobility times non-target toxicity times volume of use. Environmental risk is minimized when any of these risk factors is close to zero. The physical and chemical properties of pesticides influence their environmental risk. By considering these properties before you use a pesticide, you will be able to maximize the pest control and minimize any adverse environmental effects pesticides may have on your farm, your community, and far-reaching areas. First, let's review six properties of pesticides that can affect their behavior in the environment. These are the properties of pesticides that can cause short or long-term environmental effects on your farm. Pesticides eventually break down in the environment. This is called degradation. How fast this happens depends on the pesticide and the environmental conditions on your farm. The pesticides are broken down or degraded by soil microorganisms, by chemical reactions, and sunlight. If the soil is warm and moist, microbes use the pesticide molecules as a food source and turn them into harmless molecules such as carbon dioxide and water. Pesticides that do not break down quickly are called persistent pesticides. Persistent pesticides include chlordane and DDT, both of which are no longer used and are banned in Ontario. However, chlordane still remains in some soils, 
from applications made in the 60s and 70s. Most chlordane is lost from soil through evaporation. Persistence is greater in heavy clay or organic soil than in sandy soil. Many farm wells, particularly in corn growing areas, contain residues of atrazine. Atrazine has been found in surface and groundwater all over Ontario. Before you plan to use a pesticide, find out how persistent the pesticide is. If there is another product that will do as good a job but is less persistent, choose it instead. Pesticides may accumulate or build up in body tissues or body fat of man and animals. This is called bioaccumulation. If the body has no way of getting rid of the pesticide, every time the organism is exposed to the pesticide, more is stored in the fat cells. In the 1940s, scientists found residues of the man-made chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticide DDT in human fat. This was a cause for much alarm. Many chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides do not degrade readily. And because they accumulate in fat, they move from one creature to another upward in the food chain, all the way to us. Small levels of these types of pesticides in water and soil can magnify into a significant hazard to predators at the top of the food chain. Pesticides may change into a vapor when exposed to air or evaporate. This is called volatility. Once a pesticide evaporates, it can travel for miles, often hitchhiking on dust particles in the air. The volatile and persistent pesticide toxaphene has been found in fish in the Great Lakes and in the lakes of the Canadian Arctic, having traveled unchanged for long distances in the air from the southern U.S., where it was used on cotton until it was banned in 1982. Volatilization of the herbicide trifurolin can be reduced by the incorporation of the pesticide into soil. Check the product label for ways to apply pesticides to reduce volatility. Pesticides can bind onto soil particles and organic matter. This is called adsorption. The way a pesticide binds to the surface of the soil particle is similar to magnetic attraction. Soils that are high in organic matter or clay are the most adsorptive. These tightly bound pesticides will be less likely to leach with water, that is to move downward through the soil, and will be less likely to reach groundwater. However, a pesticide adsorbed tightly to the soil may move with soil particles eroded by wind or by water and not be so readily degraded by soil microorganisms. The amount of organic matter in the soil may be increased by the addition of manure and the incorporation of crop residues. Pesticides can move into organisms like plants and insects or structures like soil or wood, similar to the way that water moves into a sponge. This is called absorption. Once inside the tissue of an organism, the organism may use the pesticide and break it down so that it is no longer harmful to the organism. This reduces the hazard of pesticide residues remaining in food. Consider these six properties before you use a pesticide. The fate of pesticides in the environment is not determined by a single property, but by a combination of properties. And the movement of pesticides in the environment is very complex through the natural processes of drift, surface runoff, leaching, and soil erosion. Go to the pesticide label for information on application procedures for each pesticide you use to reduce the movement of pesticides in the environment. Mix your pesticides away from your source of drinking water, such as your well, so that you don't contaminate it. Wear proper safety equipment and protective clothing when you mix, handle, or use pesticides. Store pesticides properly so they do not contaminate you, your family, or the environment. Before a pesticide is registered by Health Canada to allow for sale in Canada, 
The pesticide label directions and precautions must be approved to ensure the pesticide can be applied with minimal risk if used according to the label directions. Completely read the product label to check for the environmental precautions you need to know and follow as a user to protect your farm, the environment around your community, and the planet. Strive to reduce the environmental risk of pesticide use by being a responsible user.